On this great movie episode, it's actually the first horror movie in the series. No! Good grief, what have I been doing this entire time? So we finally get to a horror movie, and the first one I'm doing is the early 1960s American film by the director Herc Harvey. It's Carnival of Souls. Ooh, coming up next. <music> Carnival of Souls is a short feature film by the director Herc Harvey, who was a writer but really didn't have much of a career beyond this film. It's a short but really effective film. It's in the Criterion Collection, it's worth watching. And most notably, this movie, Herc Harvey's strategy was to take schlock horror films, a B-movie American horror films, and combine them with Ingmar Bergman's cinematographic style. So just for the shot making alone, and I think for the editing choices, you should watch this movie. Movie begins with a car with three women in it, and they're forced into a drag race with a bunch of teenagers. You don't know where they're going, you don't know why they're involved in this drag race, the movie just goes bang and starts with it. Well, either on purpose or by accident, as they're crossing a bridge, the teenager's car forces the women off of the bridge and they dive off into the water below. Now it would appear that all three women have drowned, and as the police are getting the bodies out of the river, you see one woman emerge from the water, come up onto the bridge, and look down at the car. It appears that she survived the accident, and she's a pretty woman, probably in her 20s, maybe early 30s, who's living a single lifestyle. She's a church organist, and so she gets a call to Utah to become the lead organist as a church full-time. So maybe she can reestablish her life after this horrible traumatic event. But there's a big problem. She sees a guy, a zombie character, walking around. That only happens occasionally, and whenever she sees this guy, well, nobody else can see him. Is she seeing something that other people don't see? Has she tapped into the spirit world, for example, and she's the only one with the vision to see it? Well, this, of course, begins to drive her slowly crazy. Now, when she moves to Utah, she goes to live at a residence that has a couple of other boarders at it. One of them is a little bit of a creepy man who nevertheless wants to hit on her. He's a young 20-something guy who's looking for a hot date. I think he's probably an innocent guy, but he looks a little creepy to me. And of course, she tries to brush him off. Then too, you've got this old spa or bathhouse just outside of town. It's been abandoned, and it used to be an amusement park, sort of a carnival atmosphere with bumper cars, for example, a hotel, a spa, a place that people would go stay at. But it's an abandoned resort. She gets very fascinated with this place for some weird reason. Doesn't she know she's in a horror movie? Well, between this place, the creepy guy, and her hallucinations, things get slowly worse for her. Now, that's all I'll say about it, but I find this movie pretty compelling for a lot of reasons, one of which I think it's highly influential. There's no way that George Romero, who made Night of the Living Dead a few years later, did not watch this movie and get a lot out of it. It seems like his zombie movies are quoting Carnival of Souls pretty liberally. And oh yeah, that abandoned resort in Carnival of Souls? It sure seems like Stanley Kubrick took that idea and made it part of his movie The Shining. The woman is an organist, but also the soundtrack to this movie, the diegetic music that they don't hear in this world but you do, is organ music. It's amazing how creepy the score is. I love one of the ideas used with this score, though. I don't remember seeing it in another movie, which is that the music that you're hearing as the audience might be a soundtrack in this character's head. The idea is she might be playing the score to her own horror movie, and the organ score is part of her hallucinating or it's part of what she's able to play at some point in the church in Utah. This movie brings up a couple of interesting questions. One is that you've got the DSM-1 coming out, which organizes the psychological disorders. I think that comes out in the 50s. And it would seem that this woman, on the one hand, might be seeing the spirit world, but on the other hand, she might be a schizophrenic. She might be suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder and some form of schizophrenia. And this movie really deals, interestingly, with that disorder and with depression. You combine her PTSD, schizophrenia, and depression, and you've got a picture of a woman who's totally lost in society. And this movie, I think, gives a hint, maybe just a hint, as to what it feels like to experience all three of those psychological problems at once. It does it, of course, under the guise of a horror movie. But this particular horror movie is concerned about the question of what is real and what do our minds make up and trick us with? What delusions are we under so that we see reality in the wrong way? That's one of the main questions here for this main character. 
There's something else coming up in this movie as well, though. It's definitely possible to read this woman in this movie as being asexual. She's under pressure to be sort of a sexual object, but she seems not to know, at least, that she doesn't want to be part of that world. Of course, most horror movies, or at least a lot of them, are dealing with problems of sex and sex drives. So those are two ways to see the movie. One, about the trouble with truth and reality and hallucinating. The other with this woman's particular sexuality. Both those topics, are interesting and maybe a little edgy for a 1960s movie. I feel like this movie could be called a turning point in movie history. Not that it is, but you could read the movie this way as a hinge from which we turn from the 1950s to the 1960s. And the questions of psychic or psychedelic experiences, deep paranoia, psychological disorders, sexuality run rampant. These are some questions that come up, obviously, in America of the 1960s, perhaps in other parts of the world. And I believe this 70-minute movie, Carnival of souls is dealing with it all. Not to mention this movie is highly theological. At some point in the movie you get a psychiatrist who tells her she's just seeing things versus a pastor who's not so happy with their organ playing. And the question is can you just see this movie through only a theological lens? Can you just see it through only a psychological lens? Or is there some other dimension of human experience that both lenses do not work with? Now whether or not you're interested in any of these issues you really ought to just see this movie. Number one, it's short enough to get through very quickly. Two, the cinematography is stunning. I love the look of this movie all around. Pretty much every shot is remarkable, and from shot to shot, the editing is amazing. I was actually very surprised when I first watched this movie. I was expecting something between Invasion of the Body Snatchers and Night of the Living Dead. Both are pretty good movies from the 50s and 60s. And I think, just maybe, this movie is a cut above those two. If not, it's at least a companion to them and it deserves to be thought of as one of the great mid-20th century horror movies, a precursor to all the horror movies that have been made in the last 50 years. Have you seen this movie? What do you think? Please leave us a comment. And if you haven't, please subscribe to this channel and support what we're doing here. Thank you very much. Have a great day.